When the first car in the line suddenly exploded, the Russian soldiers realized something was off. Their goal to take over an oil field in eastern Syria was supposed to be a usual task. They believed by then the enemy would have run far away at the sight of 500 trained Russian and Syrian troops. But instead their attack was stopped by multiple sudden explosions. AC-130 planes, drones, Apache helicopters and fighter jets were swarming over the battlefield, attacking the soldiers from every possible direction. What the Russian troops didn't realize was that the oil field was not guarded by any troops, but by American Special Operations Forces backed by the world's strongest air force. Thus, within a few moments, the regular mission turned into a nightmare on Earth and one of the deadliest battles for the infamous Russian soldier for hire group Wagner. To counter the quick progress of the self-claimed Islamic State, the U.S. had positioned troops in Syria since 2014. They backed the so-called Syrian Democratic Forces, or SDF. A year later, Russia also stepped in the fight against ISIS, but on the side of Assad's Syrian government forces. The SDF and the Syrian army were never considered as allies, but following the saying the enemy of my enemy is my friend, both groups mostly stayed out of each other's way. After years of battles, both armies managed to push out the terrorists, and by 2018, ISIS controlled only a small part of its original bases. To avoid any unintended clash between Russian and US-backed armies, a deconfliction line was formed along the Euphrates River, effectively splitting Syria in two. Furthermore, both groups could reach out to each other through special phone channels available at any time. But despite these precautions on February 7th, just a few miles from the Euphrates River, the first fatal clash between Russians and Americans since the Cold War happened. Late at night on February 7, 2018, 500 Russian and Syrian fighters attacked an SDF military base. The base was located around five miles east of the Euphrates River and controlled one of the country's main oil fields. Like most oil fields, the area was officially on the Syrian democratic side of the ceasefire line. But this didn't stop the Syrian-Russian troops in any way. The attackers were supported by various Russian-made battle tanks as well as mortars, artillery, and rocket launchers, with which they began bombarding the SDF base without warning. In addition, Russian Air Force aircraft were ready to provide air support, but initially stayed grounded. However, while everything was initially going according to plan for the attacking forces, the phone suddenly rang in the Russian headquarters near the Euphrates. A representative of the U.S. military was on the line and wanted to know whether Russian fighters were currently trying to take the military base at the Kanako oil fields. Not only were the Syrian Democratic Forces under heavy artillery fire, but also their allies, American Green Barrets, Army Rangers, Marines, and various support units. After the Russians had explicitly denied the question whether the enemy were their troops, it was clear to the caller whoever was currently firing at his soldiers would feel the full power of the American military in just a few moments. The reaction to the attack on their military base was immediate and tremendous. Even before the Russian line reached its starting position for the attack, the first and last vehicles were taken out in a classic ambush tactic, trapping the forces in the middle. The missiles came from an American Reaper drone, which had been targeting the line for some time. However, to the Russian Wagner mercenaries on the ground, the drone was invisible, and they struggled to figure out where the sudden fire was coming from. It didn't take long for more shells to hit, spreading chaos on the battlefield. American artillery and high Mars rocket launchers attacked the line, inflicting many casualties. While the Russian forces were still trying to understand what was happening, four Apache helicopters appeared on the horizon. Although the gunships were several miles away, no one could hide from their precise infrared optics. The laser-guided Hellfire missiles found their target in the Russian battle tanks, while the 30 mm cannon forced the enemy infantry to retreat. Few of them were able to escape the explosive shells, and a Russian survivor later reported that they suffered around 200 casualties within the first few minutes, almost half of the entire attack force. A TV report mentioned Syria and the 25 people that are wounded there from the Syrian army. But to put it briefly, we've been kicked around. One squadron lost 200 people right away, another one lost 10 people, and I don't know about the third squadron, but it got torn up pretty badly too. So, three squadrons took a beating, 
The Yankees attacked first. They blasted the heck out of our spy artillery. Then they took four helicopters up and pushed us around with heavy caliber machine guns. They were all bombarding the hell out of it, and our guys didn't have anything besides the assault rifles. Not even shoulder-fired Sams or anything like that. So they tore us to pieces for sure, put us through hell, and the Yankees knew for sure that the Russians were coming, that it was us, Russians. Our guys were coming to take over an oil refinery, and the Yankees were holding it. We got our feet wiped, my man called me. They're there drinking now. Many have gone missing. It's a total mess. Another takedown. While AC-130 gunships circled over the battlefield attacking individual targets, big B-52 strategic bombers completely destroyed the line. Those who managed to escape hid in buildings, but even there they were not safe for long. Late into the night, the attackers were hunted by F-15 fighter jets whose bombs penetrated even the best cover. The new fifth-generation air superiority fighter F-22 Raptor was also used, but for the soldiers on the ground it no longer mattered who was bombarding them. The Russian contractors stood no chance against the American Air Force. Even though there were rumors that some pilots from the nearby Russian air base were asking for permission to take off, the blue-painted Su-34s and 35s remained on the ground. The attacker's casual Casualties were so high that in the middle of the battle one of the Russian commanders called in and asked for a ceasefire, indicating that Russian military was in contact with the attacking fighters after all. A recorded call from a Wagner soldier sums up events in Syria. Just had a call with a guy. So they basically formed a line, but didn't get to their positions by some 300 meters. One unit moved forward. The line remained in place about 300 meters from the others. The others raised the American flag, and their artillery started bombarding the shit out of us. Then choppers flew in and started cooking everybody. Ours just ran around, just got a call from a pal, so they're about 215 killed. They simply rolled ours out hard, made their point. What the hell were we hoping for in there? That they'll run away themselves. Hope to scare them away. Lots of people messed up so bad they can't be identified. There were no foot soldiers on the American side. They simply attacked the line with artillery. When the battle ended early next morning, there was nothing left of the line of vehicles. All combat vehicles have been destroyed, with the exception of a single battle tank and armored personnel carrier. Of approximately 500 Russian and Syrian attackers, at least 200 were killed or wounded. One of the mercenaries later reported that in some places they found solidified melted sand and gun barrels bent from the heat. There were no casualties on the American side, and no reports of damaged aircraft. Only one of the SDF soldiers in the base at the oil field was wounded by Russian fire but survived. The incident sparked outrage on both Russian and Syrian sides, but since the Americans had repeatedly reassured themselves through the Russian officials, they could not be blamed. According to intercepted phone calls between the leader of Wagner and Russian ministers, the attack was even said to be an order from Moscow. For Wagner group fighters, the Battle of Conoco Fields went down in history as Red February and was one of the most humiliating engagements. At least some of them received a medal specially made for this event. It shows a Russian soldier surrounded by flames, heroically shooting at an American Apache helicopter, a scene that probably never took place in this way. The Syrian Democratic Forces and their American allies successfully defended the base at the oil field and continued to fortify it. The demonstration of their superior air power was meant to be a warning to any hostile forces not to mess with the wrong people. Interestingly, when Syrian and Russian fighters gathered in the area again about a month later, the Americans once more contacted the Russian commander in charge. This time, not long after the end of the phone call, the entire Russian-Syrian fighting force hastily withdrew. Thank you. For those who made it this far, thanks for watching. If you want to help us produce more content, feel free to leave a like and tell us what you think of the attack on the U.S. base.